The Boxman, day four. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple things. Uh, first of all, we're going to review the terms lightning round style. Then we're going to look at the Boxman, paragraph 16. Then you are going to finish the rest of the reading on your own. All right, so let's start off with the speaker. Uh, this is the person who is, of course, the author, uh, whether it's the person who's giving the speech or whether they wrote it down um, and wrote it in a letter. Uh, this is the person who wants to give a message to the audience. Hey, the audience. Uh, this is the person um, or group of people who the speaker is hoping to influence. Remember, this is not everyone in the world. It's never everyone. Uh, it is always a person or specific group of people uh, that the author is speaking to, even if it's just Americans, even if it's Californians, uh, even if it is uh, a third period class uh, or a fourth period class. Uh, that's a specific audience, not the same as the others. Okay, purpose. Uh, purpose is the way that the audience uh, is hopefully going to be changed by hearing the message. Uh, so authors don't just want to uh, get people information. They want them to be, there should be some change along the way. There should be like an outcome. Uh, so if a president uh, is giving uh, a speech, uh, maybe it's to get more people to support the idea that they have. If a candidate is running for president, chances are it's they're looking to get a vote. Uh, if a person uh, is speaking to uh, someone else, uh, it could be that they want that person to give them something. Uh, it could be that they want them to stop, uh, to stop them from doing something. Whatever it is, there should be a specific outcome. Okay, diction. Diction is the word choice uh, that the speaker uses to describe the subject matter. Remember, you can tell a lot about what someone thinks about something by the words they choose to describe it. Which brings us to tone, uh, which is, of course, how the author feels about a subject. And so, once again, tone and diction tie together. The words you choose reveal how you feel about something. Imagery. Remember, not just sight, uh, but all the five senses. Sound, taste, smell, touch, all of them. Anything that evokes the five senses. Illusion, remember, a reference to something uh, that exists, whether it's real or imaginary, it's something that exists actually in the world. And so uh, don't confuse this with illusion, uh, which is a deception, um, uh, deceptive appearance. Um, illusion, with an A, uh, is a reference to something that exists. Syntax, uh, this is the organization of words and punctuation to help create greater meaning. Remember, this is the bricks uh, that make up the essay. Okay, so after going over all the terms, uh, we want to really quickly review the Boxman so far. Remember, part one, Asher introduced the Boxman, this homeless person who's building a home for himself out of these cardboard boxes. A ton of positive diction, uh, very respectful and admiring of the Boxman as he sets up for the night. Part two, uh, Asher writes about the boxcar children and Henry David Thoreau. Remember, wistful diction, uh, there's almost this like hopeful uh, and like nostalgia almost uh, for being that free and how she's almost a little bit jealous. Uh, that she can't be as free as both of those people were, um, both the children and uh, Henry David Thoreau. Part three, uh, Asher writes about the lonely ones. Remember, these are the people who are alone. They have this freedom, um, but they're sad because they're alone and they don't have anyone else to share with. And so we still don't know who the audience is yet, um, but we can guess based on all the things that have happened so far that the audience might have something to do with being alone or being lonely. All right, so let's jump right into it. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on all the rhetorical devices we've seen so far. Uh, we're going to try and figure out audience and purpose because we're finally at the end of you know this reading, um, but we want to figure out how the author is trying to impact the audience. All right, so let's start with paragraph 16. The boxman welcomes the night, opens to it like a lover. He moves in darkness and prefers it that way. He's not waiting for the phone to ring or an engraved invitation to arrive in the mail. Not for him, a P.O. box number. Not for him, the overcrowded jollity of office parties, the hot anticipation of a singles bar. Not even for him, a holiday handout. People have tried, and he shuffled away. So this is this paragraph is kind of showing how the box man is rejecting um, other people's, uh, you know, invitations to to you know be closer to him, like. The box man, uh, you know, welcomes the night here. It's not a person he's welcoming. It's actually like the night, uh, which is kind of symbolizing, based on that last paragraph, this like uh, very lonely time for a lot of people. But the box man welcomes it. So I noticed a couple of things. So I highlighted the first uh, sentence there. I think it's imagery because I can really see the box man actually like almost like hugging the night. Um, and that's kind of how the imagery is right there. 
Uh, and then I think that makes me believe that the boxman is probably happy uh, to be alone because he's embracing this where other people are kind of almost like scared of it. Uh, and then we have uh, the sound of the phone ringing, the picture of an invitation arriving, more imagery. Um, and once again, it kind of demonstrates that he's not waiting around. He's already living his life. He's not waiting for other people like so many people who are lonely do. Okay. So in paragraphs 17 through 19, you are going to finish reading. Uh, make sure that you highlight any uh, rhetorical devices that you see. Uh, make sure you are clearly uh, you know, explaining how they're impacting the author's intention. And very, very important here, try and get to what is the purpose, who is the audience, who is the audience, and how, do they, uh, how are they impacted. All right, so if you got any questions, reach out. Um, now, once again, the number is 440-670-6979. Office hours, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but please feel free to reach out whenever. All right, have a great day.